what's going on guys it's the night before deadlifts tomorrow afternoon where is going to be my last deadlift session of this volume block and i'm just getting everything ready i have moved the power rack out the way so i've got the deadlift platform set up i've got the weights out i've got my deadlift jack there i've got my bag packed everything just pretty much got everything ready and um, for deadlifts tomorrow so i have to be changing or doing anything tomorrow um, tomorrow and also just because i'm really really excited to actually train and um, tomorrow is actually the last day um, last deadlift session, well I've got a, a pause deadlift session on Saturday, but last competition style deadlift session um, tomorrow, which is also my first competition deadlift style with the the new bar, which I'm very, very excited about, um, really, really looking forward to that actually, and now I'm pretty much going to spend a good amount of time on my inversion table, going to do some mobility work with my band, not a huge amount, and going to do a little bit of rolling, and again, always talk about this, Try and do your mobility work and your foam rolling enough outside of the gym so you don't have to do it pre-workout as doing a huge amount of um, mobility and foam rolling pre-workout. In my opinion, again, personally, um, isn't necessarily the most optimal thing. If you're a fan of fruit juice, then definitely invest in the innocent apple and berry juice. I've got this one here. I'm going to drink all this. I'm going to drink all of this. I think this should be... Oh, focus, and uh, that is going to be 100 grams of carbs in that whole bottle. 100 grams of carbs in that whole bottle, I'm going to drink all of that just now, and I'll be deadlifting in around about an hour and a half. And we're rolling. What's going on guys? So what you're seeing here is a 4x4 four four with 245 kilograms or 440 pounds I believe, and then I also do a low drop to 228 kilos which is about 501 pounds for three sets of five and then lots of upper back assistance work and it uh, went so very well actually had lots and lots of fun and uh, one thing i actually like about this new bar is is that the the tensile strength is higher than what the ifp the ipf bars are, are in the ipf and um, the bars are calibrated to 202 or 203,000 psi i believe um, off the top of my head and this bar is calibrated 220,000 psi and um, so it's actually a stiffer bar than what i'll be using in competition which is absolutely ideal and exactly what i wanted because if you obviously if i can get um to kind of the numbers i really really want to be at on this bar if i then go into competition the ipf bar that that bar is going to have um a little bit a little bit kind of more whip to it which is going to make the weight obviously easier so it's kind of going to be more beneficial which is great and uh, also another thing with this bar is that it is um three and a half millimeters smaller um, in diameter than the bar i've been using my whole life so to grip this um is absolutely beautiful it is ridiculously easy and it's actually it's a lot easier to grip and uh, it's actually a lot less um, kind of wear and tear is actually putting my thumbs as well because the bar isn't so big which doesn't really i, I don't really have a reason like a, a, a reason for that i'm not really sure why it just kind of seems to be that way so um yeah it is, it is um, really really good and it's just such a positive change using this bar on deadlifts uh, honestly and uh, what what a difference immediate positive difference in this the only difference is is that the knurling starts um three inches sooner than the the knurling that was in my old bar uh, the knurling is about three inches um closer in towards the center so kind of just kind of trying to work out where to put my uh, my feet set up uh, the exact every single time it's going to take a little bit again used to but it's, it's not an issue it's nothing to be worried about uh, i've got it pretty nailed down pretty well and i uh, just honestly love this session and uh, at the end, what you'll actually see as well is me do, me finish off with some core work. I don't ever really tend to include it, as I feel that it tends to kind of, it's, it's a wee bit boring. And um, it, it's, 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 there's just not really uh, much excitement to come from it. But the reason I'm showing it in once you see it is because uh, I feel that a lot of people tend to train their core kind of wrong and incorrectly. I feel that people tend to do a lot of crunches and things like that, uh, where they really kind of teach their core to collapse. And then they're training their core to collapse and the thing is is that obviously in powerlifting you want your core to do the opposite you really don't want your core to collapse at all again this is just my opinion guys and um, but again you don't want your core to collapse you want to teach your core and train your core to remain absolutely rock solid and rigid um and then one unit and you wanted to teach it to do the opposite of collapsing so that's why doing stuff like abu rollouts and um, planks farmers walks hanging leg raises exercises like that 
in my opinion, is so crucial and so beneficial because it really, really teaches your core to remain solid in one unit and really rigid while working with other muscles as well um, that obviously you're going to be using during your movements. So to me, I just feel that it's a, it's a much more carryover onto the big movements like your squats, um, your deadlifts, your overhead presses um, and things of that nature, guys.